Hi everyone, and welcome to this short number talk video. In this video, we are going to learn about the addition strategy of making tens. Making tens will help you recognize and use groups of ten to add efficiently. If you are a teacher, you want your students to be able to immediately recognize and use groups of ten. If you want to grow professionally as an educator, engage your students, and learn about all other things education, or if you're a student learning about a new strategy, then make sure you start by subscribing now and clicking on that bell icon so you don't miss anything. For our first problem for the Making 10 strategy, let's add 6 plus 4. So for some of you, you might see 6 and 4, and as a known fact, you know that those two come together and make 10. If you don't see that immediately, what you might do is a counting on strategy where you start at 6 and you add 4 on. So it could look like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What you want is to start recognizing numbers like 6 and 4 and immediately knowing that these two numbers are going to come together and make 10. So 6 plus 4 equals 10. Let's take a look at another example where we're going to add three numbers together. So let's try 4 plus 9 plus 6. When you see a question like this, where you're adding three numbers together, you want to ask yourself, what numbers can I add together to make a 10? We know from our previous question that 6 and 4 make 10, and here we have a 4 and a 6. So we can put those numbers together, add them together, and make 10. 4 plus 6 equals 10. Now if you look at the previous question, we had 6 plus 4, and we get a sum of 10. But when we have 4 and 6, we also get a sum of 10. And this is an important fact about addition, where it doesn't matter what order we add our numbers in, we're always going to get the same sum. So we can add 6 and 4 and get 10, or 4 and 6, and we still get 10. Now that we have our 10 here, the only number that we haven't added yet is 9. So we can add 9 and the 10, and we'll get our final sum. So 9 plus 10 equals 19. We'll look at one more example in this group. This time, let's add 6 plus 8 plus 4. So, once again, we're looking for two numbers that we can add together to make 10. So, in this example, as we've seen so far, we have a 6 and a 4 that we can add to get a sum of 10. All that's left to do now is add the 8 to the 10, and with that we get a sum of 18. So that's one way that you could solve this question. The other way though you might be thinking is you could look back at the previous question and you know that 4 plus 9 plus 6 is 19 because we just solved that question. So if we have 6 and 8 and 4 that we're adding together, it's going to be one less than when we had the 9. So if we added 4 and 9 and 6 and got 19, we know that we can add 6 and 8 and 4 and get 18. Let's move on to another example. This time we're going to add 4 numbers together, but we're going to use the same principle of making tens. So this time we're going to add 5 plus 7, plus 3, plus 5. 5, plus 7, plus 3, plus 5. Still thinking of the same strategy though, look at those numbers and ask yourself, what numbers can I add together to give me 10? What might jump out at you right away is the 5 and the 5. You know that two 5's together is going to make 10, so let's start by adding those. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Now you might also see right away 
that 7 and 3 is going to be 10, because that might be a known fact for you. If that's not a known fact, you might start at 7 and count on 3, 8, 9, 10. What you want, once again, is for this to become a known fact. You want to see 7 and 3, or 3 and 7, and immediately know that those two numbers are going to make 10. So we can do that on the next line down here, 7 plus 3, and that equals 10. Our final step in this case is to add the 10 and the 10 together to get our final sum. So if we add 10 plus 10, we get 20. Let's try another one. Let's try 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6. So this one builds on a previous, the previous question that we did where we added 6 and 4, or 4 and 6. So hopefully what you see immediately is that you can put the 4s and the 6s together to make two groups of 10. So we can add a 4 and a 6, and we get 10. And maybe just to switch it up, we add 6 plus 4, but we also get 10. Final step, just as in the previous example, we can add our two tens together, add those two groups, and we get our final sum. 10 plus 10 equals 20. For our final group of numbers, we're going to start using two-digit numbers. Let's start with 10 plus 13. So we're still using our strategy of making tens. So with this, we have one 10, and we have the 13. But if we're thinking of our place value, we know that we have one 10 and three ones. So what we could do is subtract three from 13. So we have 13, subtract three, and that equals 10. Now that we have our 10 here, we can add our two 10s together. So 10 plus 10 equals 20. And now we can add this three that we previously took off we can add back on to our 20. So 20 plus 3 is 23. Now I added this little extra step in here of subtracting the 3 and then adding it back on later. You might just be able to add your 10 and your 13 and go immediately to 23. You may not have to do these middle steps here to get your final sum, but if you do, that's okay. Let's look at another example. Let's try 7 plus 13. When you look at this, what you hopefully see is the 7 and the 3 of the 13. So your 7 is in the 1s if you're thinking of place value, and your 3 is in the 1s position of the place value, and your 7 and 3 will come together to make that 10. So what you could do Thinking of what we did here for this previous example, you could take your 13 and subtract 3, which of course leaves you with 10. You can then take that 3 and add it to your 7. And make a 10 that way. And then when you add your two 10s together, you end up with 20. Now you might have also seen that when you add your 7 and 13, it combines to give you the next 10. So that's a different way to look at this, is looking at your 7 and 13 and thinking of the next 10 that's above 13. So it's of course 20. So you could look at your 7 plus 13, know that your 7 and 13 is going to make another 10, and that's going to bring your sum up to 20. So for this final example, what if we have 7 plus 25? When you see the 7 and 25, you might know that when you add your 7 to the 5 from the 25, you're not going to end up with an even 10. You're not going to hit 30. You know you're going to be a little bit over that. So what do you do? when you don't have two numbers that make that even perfect 10. 
what you might want to ask yourself is what can you add to the 25 to get to that next 10? And you might see, well, the next 10 is 30. So I know I have to add another 5 to the 25 to get to 30. Let's start by looking at the 7. So if we start with 7, what can we subtract from 7 to get 5? How about 2? If we have 7 and we subtract 2, we get 5. What we can do now is add this 5 to our 25, and that will make our next 10 30. So we are using our making 10 strategy. We're using a bit of subtraction here to take something away from the 7 to give us 5, and adding that 5 to 25 to get 30. Now our final step is to add this 2 that we just previously subtracted. So we're going to add 30 plus 2, and we get a final solution of 32. Those are just some quick examples of how you can use the addition strategy of making tens to help you add numbers efficiently. If you liked this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more awesome math videos. Until next time, take care and keep learning.